Hello, people. Uh, I just decided to do this show at the last minute and throw it together. <laughs> My fucking eyebrows fucked up. And so, how you doing? Uh, I have nobody in my chat room yet, so this is thrown out together at the last minute. So for you people that feel like I didn't tell you in time, I apologize. But um, I'm doing this because I was gonna I was gonna release a video on Vinny Asaro. Uh, Vinny Asaro was a captain in the Bonanno family, and he was based out of uh, basically Howard Beach. A very interesting guy. The law was looking for him forever. Uh, River Osk, how you doing? Sean Sullivan, how you doing? Simping ain't easy. How you doing, guys? Welcome. Sorry I didn't let you know sooner I was coming on. Uh, but I'll let some more people get in here before I start my story on uh, Vinny Asaro. Very interesting story. Uh, well, it's like I said, I was going to drop a video, but you know I'm sitting home and I said to myself, Let, why not do a live show? Uh, can you guys hear me okay? Because I've been having trouble with my uh, voice here and setting up this damn mic. So if you can't hear me, please let me know. But let me talk about, before I start the show, I just want to talk about something. You got a group of guys here that their shows every day is attacking this show. And, you know, I can understand why. Over the last 20 days, I've had 100,000 views. By far my busiest 20 days that I've ever had on YouTube. My show is going forward and growing. It's not going back. And it's growing honestly. And there's no crap being done like these people claim. It's because I'm putting out good content and people like the shows. I did two shows over the weekend. Both of them did really, really well. And what I'm trying to do for you guys now is give you more lives. And I hope you enjoy the lives. But, you know, if you watch certain shows every day, they are attacking the show. It's kind of comical, actually, because they think it bothers me, but it doesn't. Because they don't understand what algorithm is. And when you attack somebody, what you do is you keep their name in the algorithm continuously. So it's fine. Let them attack me. But when you're selling your soul, and this is to guys that are even my friends, when you're selling your soul to be friends with people that have said horrible things about you, you really got to think about who you are as an individual. You know, they're attacking me and they're saying that I, got, I wanted nothing to do with a truce. They wanted everybody to get a truce going on. And so... There was no way I was going to do a truce with the guy in the car or his little clown buddy that goes to the uh, methadone clinic. There's no way that I would do truces with people like that. And there's definitely no way that I would even ever want to do a truce with the guy that uses his wife all the time on his show. It's not going to happen. I would never do that. They're not good people. And what's tearing them up is this old man, me. I'm here and I'm putting together shows and they're doing well. So what they've done now, and if you see it, now they even have this clown, this clown that names himself after a place in Brooklyn. And we know who that is. Not Italian. He's not from where he says he says he's from. And he's been hustling for eight years now. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to use these shows to attack people. I'm going to do blogs on them and put it on my website. So I have someone working on the blog from the guy that claims that he knows people from Philadelphia. So I won't use his name because he calls lawyers and he threatens to sue people. He's a real coward. And so two days in a row, he's gone on his show and really he's attacked me. And I've never had no issues with this guy. But now he's buddies with the guy that uses his wife. And so they attack that way. But it doesn't matter because they're not affecting the numbers of this show. This show just keeps getting bigger. More people are watching this show. And it tears them up. 
And the reason this show is successful because you guys come here on a regular basis and you're loyal. They don't understand that. And the last thing I would do, I would not want you guys to go into their shows attacking them. Don't be like those people are. You know, just stay away from them. It's not worth it. Let them do the attacks. But it's not accomplishing nothing. It's not hurting my numbers at all. So let them enjoy doing it. And when there's an old saying, when people go after you, you always got to take it from where it comes. That's the most important thing. Where is it coming from? Who are the people attacking you? How do they live? What do they do in their life? That's basically it. You know, I'm a, I'm basically a bachelor for the first time in years. I live in my own place. I pay my bills. I go shopping, take care of my foods. I put gas in my car. And I live a pretty decent life. But yet they'll make it sound like I'm on this, I live in a welfare motel and I got, I'm on social security and all this stuff. Now, people, do you really think that? I'm very happy with my life. And what makes me happier when I can, right right now I got 80 people on here. And when I can come on and just have people jump on like this and listen to me, it means a lot to me. I mean, it really means a lot. And this is the problem. We are not appreciating our shows. When we do our shows and we brutally attack people, And then you gang up on people. It's not really enjoying your show. When you have guests coming on and you're afraid to tell people who you got coming on because they might contact that guest, you have issues. Like if you're doing an interview, we have one guy doing an interview tonight and he hasn't even announced who he's interviewing. He doesn't have the balls to announce who he's interviewing people. He's afraid to. Because he's afraid that people will get a hold of that person he's interviewing, which nobody should do. You know, if we do interviews, you know, we should just leave the people alone and let them come on and interview. You know, as big as a scumbag as this guy is, I would not want anybody to contact that person coming on his show and tell him not to come on. Why do that? Okay, Uh, listen, I'm going to drop the link. Sean, I see you're here. If you want to jump on, you're more than welcome. Because Sean, I like when Sean jumps on because I know he has only a couple days off a week. And I believe this is one of the days he has off. So, Sean, I'm going to put the invite. If I know who you are, you're more than welcome to jump in. This show is for you guys today. And we're going to start talking about Vinny Asaro in a couple minutes. And for you guys that don't know, Vinny Asaro, like I said, was a captain in the Bonanno family. And he ran the Howard Beach area. Uh, and he beat the cops a lot. He got charged on some really serious charges, Vinny Asaro. Um, let me just give you an idea who Vinny Asaro was. I'm looking for some pictures here that I got. I'm going to show you these pictures, guys, to give you an idea of who's who. Who's going to be in the stories. No. Sean, what are you doing, my man? Staying warm. Hey, I like having you on because, you know, you, you brighten the show up. You're a, str- you're a good guy. You're straight. You got a smile on your face. And you date a hippie. No. <laughs> so how's you, how you doing today, my man? Good. I worked. Uh, I went to work at 11 o'clock and I got off at 8 at night. Well, I'll tell you what, man. No one can't say you're not working, and you're in the in, and you're in the restaurant industry. That's some hard ass work, my man. Yeah, I'm proud of myself. I have a good life. You know what I mean? No illusions of grandeur. I just one day at a you time. You live in the mountains of California. You got an old lady. It looks like you live in some type of log cabin or something. 
<laughs> no, I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, but like they they totally redid it. Like they put like uh you know wood around it. You know, like yeah, who wouldn't, dude, who wouldn't want to do that? I mean, that's you know that you know that sounds like a nice little time you're having. Sometimes, yeah, you're... but but um, with help of my mom and stepdad, this is they you know this is like one of their homes, and we pay rent and stuff. They let us live here, but God's great. You know what I mean? Well, that's good, man. And, and, and you look, you're working, you're happy, you got a great, you know, you seem like a really good guy. Maybe you're not. Maybe you're a serial killer, and I just don't know about it. But no. you know, you know, but you're keeping it. Maybe that woman that's with you, you put there, and you won't let her go. Who the hell knows? But no, that, know, yeah, hey, I, that's a true statement. I get comfortable too easy. I don't like change. Well, that's what relationships are about. What's the first thing we do when we get in relationships? We get fat. Uh -huh. We start eating. <laughs> we don't give a shit. And then all of a sudden, you're about to, and all of a sudden, when you're about to break up, you're like, "Oh shit, I'm about to break up. I better go on a diet." No, she left me once and came back, so I didn't like living alone. How long did she leave you for? Three months. Was it three? Hey, I'm that nosy. Three months. Yeah. I'm nosy. Today we're going to do a little Dr. Fell. We're going to do some. Hey, Dr. yeah, Hill hey, I want to be interviewed. Solo. I want to be interviewed. Interview me. Okay. So when you guys broke up, <laughs> ask, what was the reason? What was the reason? Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> She's back there laughing right now. So it must have been a damn good reason. Yeah, we were we weren't getting along. But that's every relationship. No, I know. Okay, so finances were real rough. I hit a bad patch, and I kind of got depressed. And uh, she was going to cosmetology school. She started that, and that was off the hill. So she made uh, preparations to move down the hill and go to cosmetology school, and then... Uh, you know, I was just alone, and then, you know, things happened, and she decided to move back up. Well, that's good, though. You know? Yeah. Because, you know, one thing about me, when a woman leaves me, they never come back. They're gone. They're, like, way down the road. They don't even turn around. I mean, I don't even – they don't talk to me, no, except my first wife. But in general, you know, <laughs> and I'm the sweetest guy in the world. I can never understand that, Sean. Uh, so – Right now you're working. Now, what kind of work are you doing at this restaurant? So I host, I wash dishes, and I bust tables. So you're one of those guys that is the heart and soul of the restaurant. Guys like you keep it moving. Well, I mean, yeah, one of them. I mean, the kitchen staff are really hardworking people. And then one of the cooks, he works in the morning at another job. And then he works seven days a week. The man's a machine. I mean, no days off. I mean, I'm not that, but. Like I, I'm, I'm my, I work to my, I mean, I give them worth, you know what I mean? It's not, I'm not there just for a paycheck to stand around. I actually work for what I'm worth. I work hard. This is a kidnapping remark. When, no. a, when a woman, no, this is toward me, but it's kind of funny. When a woman leaves Lee, it's because she escaped. <laughs> That's some funny shit right there. Just joking. You're not joking. That was some, you know, don't apologize for a funny, for a funny. And work, working at a restaurant to see, like, people go to a restaurant, you know, they go there, they eat, they want to be normal. And, like, for my, like, psychologically, like, when I seen everybody, like, going there for Valentine's Day, maybe it was a first date or a long marriage, you know, it's a trip to see people and their table and, you could kind of see them, you know, I don't have time to watch everybody, but, you know, people, you know, it's a trip. Hey, Doo-Doo uh, Doo -Doo Brown's in town. The guy I'm talking about, I'll give you guys a hint. He's uglier than sin, won't show his face, and he did two shows in a row where I could not defend myself, and he was blasting the shit out of me, and then he did a victory tour. He went around to all these other shows, and they're talking to him like he's some kind of hero. Wow, you went after Lee. You tore Lee apart and stuff. But he, in real life, he's like five foot two. He drags his leg. And he's semi-retarded. <laughs> he, he has people fooled. But you know what? 
uh, actually, I, I, what I'm doing right now is I got someone writing a blog on him. He's been on these channels for eight years. He hasn't accomplished much. His show hasn't really taken off. And he's really bothered by the fact that I put up a blog that's doing really well. I average several thousand hits on my blog a day, thanks to my my writer, who's in this room. Uh, he's a regular on, my, on the show, and he writes all these blogs. And right now, we have like about 20 gangsters we wrote about. Great stuff. And then he was saying that, that I shouldn't brag about it because I'm not writing it. But when you have a website, you hire people th to do things for you. And I never claimed to be a mob historian. I'm learning about the mob, you know, and that's the difference between me and a lot of people. I don't try to pretend I'm a mob historian. I love learning about the mob, though. Right. You know, it, it's fun. And like, Sean, why are you on these channels, especially the mob genre? Well, I mean, I, I was kind of, I was kind of like, just to have a voice. I mean, just that you had a show, it wasn't really about the mob stuff. I mean, if I want mob stuff, I can go and see street guys. I know street guys, you know what I mean? But that's not me. I'm not a tough guy. It's just, I know either prison or jail or death. You know what I mean? I was schooled by really like, you know, my dad. And like I said, he had a hard life. Like, it's cool to hear the stories, but, like, when it comes to them on the Internet profiting off of people that are passed away and they're making money, they're selling their souls for personal gain. gain. And I believe that they're going to be held accountable. But they can't do that. You can't talk about murders. That makes me sick to my stomach to hear these people. Hey, I killed your nephew. I killed your son. It's like, no, dude, you who would ever think in, in this woke, this crazy world we live in, you can go on the Internet and talk about murder and nothing will happen to you? That, well, I, but unfortunately, it does happen to some people. Let me give you an example. Uh, Frankie Pasquale was on here and he described the murder, but he gave different testimony about the murder. And he actually on here implicated his own father. And so there's a guy sitting in prison, and it's uh, Stephen Crea, I believe. He's sitting in prison. So all this stuff's coming out now. And so uh, this organization pushback is basically saying, see, we told you, look at this. Uh, we got people admitting that this man in jail is in, a, in prison is innocent. And they're trying to get him out. They're trying to get a new trial because you've got these guys on here that can't keep their mouths shut. And Frankie Pasquale comes out, he gets out of prison. The first thing he starts talking about is the shit that he did on the street. But the stuff he's saying is different than what he said on the stand. Uh -huh. So kind of you have an innocent man sitting in prison right now. But these guys talk. Another thing, uh, Panisi. Remember when Panisi was on with uh, Armchair? Yeah, uh, the, the, the guy you talk to sometimes. Yeah. Yes. Well, he, he started the show. It was called The Button Man. He was on with Panisi. And Panisi started talking. Panisi started saying things that were opposite of his original uh, his original statements when he was on the stand. So he got in trouble. So that's it. Gangsters got big mouths, and they like to brag, and they like to, what they try to do is they try to make themselves a lot bigger than what they are. And that's this is what they're doing. So you've got cases that are going to be flipped over because of these guys. They come online and they can't keep their mouth shut. And that's what's happening right now. And yeah, I understand that. It's just it it's just hard for for me to understand sometimes. You know, it's just weird. I, I it's just like money and financial gain. It's like I realize that some of this stuff is people's livelihoods, but you know. Why Why do that? Why sell out? You can get a job. You're an able-bodied human. Well, you know what? If anybody's coming on to YouTube to make money, the odds are very unlikely you're going to make money. Really? Really? Oh, yeah. yeah, it's very yeah. hard to make money on YouTube. It's very hard to be successful and have a good show. Uh, if someone told me a year ago I was going to... One year ago, uh, on the 12th, three days ago, my brother killed himself. And when he did that, 
I was lost. I had, I didn't have no show on here. Uh, and so I started doing a show with my son and then we had some, we had some differences. And so I decided to come over here and rebuild my show. And I started talking about the mafia and thank God, I'll be honest with you. I started talking about John A. Light. And when I talked about John A. Light, I started getting followers and the channel just built up and up, built up and up and up. I had Jimmy Calandra come on. He helped me get him. You know what? I have my differences with Jimmy Calandra, but Jimmy Calandra is pretty popular. So, you know, he has over 20,000 subs now. And so our shows start growing. You, If you guys remember when I first started this, Kane Shades and, believe it or not, FBS were on my show with me. Uh -huh. We started on this show. Like every, every day, every other day, we would have shows. FBS was a totally different person. At that time, he was a human being. He didn't become this egotistical maniac that he is now. And but the other guy's show, that's his livelihood. You could totally tell that. With him, sure. Yeah. When, you, when you go on looking for money, listen, I consider money a blessing. If someone donates to my show, it's like, thank you. You know, the uh -huh. reality is I don't need the money to survive and to live. Exactly. So everything I do get is just extra fucking money, you know. So you know, I'm happy about it. I got 140 people here right now. It's noon. It's uh, I mean, Midwest time. See, if I wanted to, I can come on seven o'clock at night and have three, four hundred people. But that doesn't no, like I just like, feel honored to have this many people. Yeah, like the question you asked, like what made me like want to come on your show is basically just to talk to somebody and have a voice. But that that's see the little things to me, I can appreciate. You understand? You took the time and effort to start a show. Somebody like myself, I would never do that because I just that's not me right now. You got, you know, and what makes your show different is you can tell that it's not uh your your main financial uh you, it, you're not um what's that word you're not dire just to come out with content and, yeah. and you'll you never know, hear me you'll never hear me say oh i'm not making no money so i don't know i'm gonna shut down early tonight these other yeah, guys exactly. say that that's what they literally come on here for you'll never hear say tom lavecki is saying it you'll never hear you'll never hear um uh, Jeff Nadu saying it. There are people that are very professional, like those guys. They actually have money. But these clowns will make me sound like I have no money, but you don't hear me on here asking for money. Yeah, there's no justification. It's just any publicity and anything is good publicity. So in all actuality, you want them to mention your name. You want them to... It's great. It, I'm going to answer. Johnny, come lately. I want to get to this. Lee... It, uh, was it Tony who lied when he said that you told him MTR was uh, had info on FBS's wife? You never addressed it. It looks suspect. The reason I haven't addressed it because it's not worth addressing it, and it's bullshit. That's why. Okay? Anything that comes out of this guy who claims he was part of the Philly mob is a lie. He's been lying for eight years about who he is. So... I, You're you know, talking only, about John, right? You're talking no, about no, John? I'm going to mention no names here. Uh, okay. I'm not mentioning their names because that's what they want me to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so so we all know who the guy is from Philadelphia. He pretends he's from Philadelphia. He actually grew up in Virginia in a middle-class household. He's, he doesn't know any gangsters. He's a lie. He's a fake. He's a phony. And he's been making money off people for years not having no connections to nobody. They would make fun of him. He doesn't show his face because he's uglier than sin. I mean, if you want to look good, just stand next to him. <laughs> Any human being, just sit next, stand right next to him. He is one... Dude, I mean, somebody. he was punished when he was born. Have you ever seen, like, when Kramer came in and seen the ugly baby and jumped back? Like, whoa! Or the person that yeah. fell off the ugly tree? Yes. Well, this guy also challenged me to a debate. And I told him, yes, I will debate you under one condition, with two conditions. Either we do it on Tom Lavecchia's show or MREs. MRE and Tom Lavecchia asks the questions. We don't know what the questions are. And you show your face during the debate. 
Does that sound like I'm asking for a lot? It's like, you know, I'm not going to debate an avatar. Because when you debate an avatar, you're automatically, you're going to have a hard time winning. But show your face. But the guy, you know, if he, if he agrees to that, you know who you are. Okay. A matter of fact, your name isn't just Johnny come lately. You're one of the characters in this right now. Oh, wow. Uh... Okay. But I'm not going to name the guy because that's what he wants. He's a little bitch and he'll call his lawyer. I sent him an email two days ago and I said to him, I said, dude, why are you talking crap on your show about me? Why don't you talk? Just talk to me. You know what he did? He goes, I'm sending this to my lawyer. I'm like, lawyer. So then I sent him another email that says, oh, suck my dick. Send that to your lawyer, too. <laughs> and that was it. It's just, it. But this is what you have behind the scene with these people. They act like tough guys, and they're not tough. They, they have no idea what tough is. Okay, I'm going to read some of these. Uh, Grant Calder, to assist New Beginnings, if you haven't already. Yes, uh, Grant is supposedly my son, and New Beginnings is my daughter accusing to these other losers. So you know what? Grant's been very loyal from the very beginning. He gets attacked all the time for being loyal and being a friend so we need more people like grant calder in this world and we need and the reality of the situation they're just other content creators yeah you know they're good guys man <laughs> because, because you know people see grant Calder on my show and they go well we hate you because you're on lee cole's show how stupid does that sound i don't give a hoot who's on their show i i don't care at all it's just stupid okay Jack Jones, uh, this other guy is uh, the garden gnome. Uh, Jack, you're insulting garden gnomes. I mean, he wishes he looked as good as a garden gnome. Who claimed you lied about FBS's wife prostitution thing with Tony R. Word pasta. Then you wonder why fans lose interest in the drama. But you know, here's the thing, Jack. They haven't lost interest in my show. They're the ones having issues right now with followers and stuff. We have people that are literally out there buying subs uh, and, you know, all of a sudden they got a bunch of people on their channel. And, uh, but it's your, it's your job to figure out who it is. It's not hard to see who's buying subs. All you got to do is go into their chat rooms and see how many people come along and say, Oh, I just subbed on your channel. Uh, and that's what happened. If you got a lot of people like that, the chances are that there's no, and there's other ways too. Tom Lebecchia was mentioning to see if people are buying subs. Uh, but you know what? The reality is you, uh, Yahoo knows it. Yahoo. YouTube knows whether you're buying subs. And when you get to 10,000, if you're buying subs, you will not get a plaque from them. It's that simple. They'll always consider you a cheater. Jesse, how you doing, my man? Here's another loyal guy, Jesse. I mean, Jesse gets hell. You know, they the other day they were going after Jesse, and I'm thinking to myself, why the hell are you going after Jesse? That's like a mistake. You know, Jesse's very good at this. So, right. You know, don't go after Jesse. I don't, it's, it's a bad move. Okay. Uh, Gordon can't stand Lee's mole. <laughs> you need to actually pronounce words correctly, Lee. Anyone can read an article. Well, Gordon, I'm not reading an article. And one of my biggest people that I love is Donald Trump. And you know what? He pronounces words shitty as hell. So what the hell? I'm an educated man, highly educated man. Graduated on the honor roll. Can you say that, Gordon? I have a feeling you cannot. Okay. Hey, you, you just... Uh... You mentioned Trump. Do you, Trump, you want to see something real cool that I have from him? Yes. Watch this. So this was sent to me April 9th, 2020, and this isn't an auto pen. This is the is real it Melania? Pen. No, 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 no. This is an no. uh, this isn't an auto pen. Watch. I'm gonna all right. Can you see it? Oh, yeah. That's well, not an auto pen signature. It's a real deal. And Donald Trump sent that to you. Yeah. And what's it say on it? Uh, I was 
I was talking to him about homeless ho- homelessness, and uh, I wrote him April 9th, twenty twenty, and then uh, he said, "Thank you for sharing your story with me and for expressing your concerns about the devastating problems of home- homelessness in our country." My administration is working every day to c- create a society of opportunity in which all our uh, citizens can achieve the American dream. As part of these efforts, we are helping state and local governments ad- uh, addresses address. And, that, and that's from oh. Donald. And, and that's from Donald Trump. Yeah. Well. I'm glad I'm not trying to cut you off, but I kind of am. <laughs> but that that says that's what Donald Trump does. A lot of people don't realize the good things that he does. And uh, uh, can you imagine Joe Biden sending that to you? But let's I'm going to get off the politics. People get yeah, mad. go ahead. Uh, people get mad. But the fact of the matter that you got it. And when did they send that to you? In, April in 9th, 2020. Have you ever been to one of his rallies? No, I've been to a couple of his rallies. Let me tell you something. It does nothing like being at one of his rallies. I mean, I, I seen one in Colorado Springs, which was phenomenal. And one in Waukesha in uh, Wisconsin. Uh, and both of them were packed to the gills and they were incredible just to be at one of them, whether you like him or not to be at one of his uh, rallies is different than anything. else. That's a party, huh? And he's a funny bastard. I mean, he'll say shit that is so funny. I mean, and it's off the it's off the cuff, you know, the way he does it. Okay, this one says Gordon. Here's Gordon. He's still in. But you're friends with Gene, though. You support rats. How do I support rats if I'm friends with Gene? I don't understand that. Do you realize that most people have friends that have ratted and they don't even know who they are? You know. It's the most ridiculous thing. See, this is the problem that I have. No one can tell me who I can be friends with. No one can tell me who's going to be on this show. Nobody. This is my show. I created this. And if I want Gene on my show, I'll have Gene on my show. Nobody knows why a person rats. I disagree with what a rat does. I believe if you choose to be in that life, you have to be willing to to take the punishment. But that's him. He has to live with ratting. I've never ratted. You know, that's that, that's just the way I feel, my man. But Gordon, it's obvious why you're here. So, uh, okay, uh, Antonio, just so you know, Antonio is the one that, Antonino, I'm sorry, Antonino is the one that writes my blogs for me. That's nice. Yes, and uh, he's, him and I have, uh, been friends from the very beginning, and these are true friends. And, you know, he he's a true friend. He comes up with ideas. He helps me with my blog. And he doesn't ask me for anything financially. And th- the blog is going to do well. I just monetized it. It's going to do better than my YouTube channel. And uh, my hope is to be able to take uh, – to help uh, – Antonino for everything he does for me. And that's real friendship. And Antonino's from Brooklyn. He knows a lot of people in the life. You know, these are guys, you know, as you can see, he's kind of Italian. His name's kind of Italian, (laughs) you know, but, you know, I'm proud to have him as a friend. Darren, C4, you know him. You know what kind of guy he is. Uh, Sean Malkovich here. This is great, guys. Okay. Uh, Lee, what do you make of Canarsie acting like he will sue you over the gene thing? Sounds like a lawyer, like a BS move to me. He's all talk, people. That's all he is. He could sue me anytime he wants. But you know what he did? He sued John A. Light. He has a lawsuit against John A. Light where John A. Light's not allowed to say anything bad about him. You know, he doesn't want nobody saying bad things about him. A uh, def- defamation of character type thing, huh? Well, John A. Light knows a lot of things about him that he doesn't want anybody to know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, these are things I know too. Right. When he got on his show and he blasted me the way he did the other night, people are like, Lee, why don't you say something back? It's like, I don't have to. 
I'll deal with him when the time's right. Really? He got on you? Oh, oh my wow. gosh, dude. He got on me. And he, he threatened to come to Texas and shoot me. And, and you know, literally. And then he took it off his show. And then he threatened to beat me up. This guy has probably never been in the fight in his life. He probably doesn't even know what a gun looks like. And uh, he's just your typical guy that acts tough behind the keyboard. That's it. And people... They, you know, I, I used to have no problem with him, but then he tried to scam me about a month ago and pretend that, uh, that's part of the blog. That's going to be in the blog, that whole story of what he tried to do, but I don't really care what he wants. Uh, I'm not going to put his name up. If, see, if you put his face up and you let people see it, he'll sue you. He'll, he'll go to YouTube and ask them to take your show down. That's wow. what he he this is this is what he does. He's he's a cop caller, and this is what he does. But that's fine. He, you know, everything that he said in his last two shows about me are not forgotten, and I will deal with him in a professional way between me and him, and that's that. Okay, I'm sorry, Grant. Uh laugh out loud. Imaginary mob guys in rooms all listen to MTR show. They call him laughing at his uh, misfortunes. Uh, get help, Jeff Lohman. That's mental. Yeah, you know, that's his real name. When you got to name yourself after a part of Brooklyn, that tells you everything you need to know about that human being. And right now he's getting mad. He's like, I'm mad. I'm going to sue Lee. He can go on his show and attack me for two straight shows. But if I say something about him, he'll cry and whine about it and threaten to sue people. That's what he does. And Where's the money going to come from? Lawsuits cost money. Strictly, he lives with his mommy and daddy, and he has money. You know, he does. He knows nothing about the mob. It's he's what he knows about the mob is what he's taught himself. Okay, he's smart when it comes to knowing about the mob, it, but it's not because he was part of the mob. He taught himself about these people. That's it. That's all he is. And he went after Jeff Nadu the other day. And this is how this whole thing started. I, I, I said to him, I said, why are you going after Jeff Nadeau? And it was because Jeff Nadeau shows growing. And this guy's been around forever and he wants his show to grow. And he's stagnant. His show's not growing. He sees that people's numbers are better than his. He hates it. But it's like, it's, it's the most childish shit. You can't make this stuff up. Some of these mobsters are just lazy and don't want to work. Bingo. That's why they're mobsters. Uh, I, uh, I'm dealing with one guy right now who's my friend, and he told me that, Lee, I never worked in my life. This is the first job I've ever had. Wow. And he's in his mid-30s. So he's telling me he never worked in his life because he's been hanging out with gangsters his whole life. Or he's been a gangster. He's been stealing. He's been taking money. And he's never worked before. You know, we have 170 people here. Okay. And uh, those are phenomenal numbers for 1230 on a Tuesday morning, guys. So, Give right. it up for the working man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, let's see. Uh, blows my mind that they wouldn't stick with their testimony. Yeah, let's get back. I'm going to talk... Uh, have you ever heard of uh, Vinny Asaro, Sean? Okay, Vinny Asaro. So you're going to learn something about Vinny Asaro. This is what I... Vinny Asaro was a suspect in the 1969 death of Paul Katz. Uh, Paul Katz owned a warehouse. And you did, have you ever seen Goodfellas? Yeah, the movie Goodfellas? Yeah, of course. Okay, so Vinny Asaro was very good friends with James Burke, the character that, that was played by Robert De Niro. So they found out that this guy, Paul Katz, uh, was ratting on them. And, and, and what happened was the warehouses were being uh, raided. So what they did is they murdered Paul Katz. Uh, a matter of fact, he, he, uh, Vinny Asaro strangled him with a dog leash. Mm. And then they basically got rid of the body. But that's a whole, that's a whole different story. Uh, the body was dismembered and disposed. And Asaro, at that time, he had a, a construction company and a fencing company, and they cut the body up and stuff. And what they did is they put the body 
uh, eventually they moved the body. This I can never understand. Jimmy Burks put the body at his daughter's house. They were laying new foundation in the back of the house. And they put the body there. So here's Jimmy Burke, who's supposed to be this smart guy, putting a body of a dead guy that they murdered in his daughter's yard. Does that sound smart? No. <laughs> so eventually they found the body. Uh, but some of the body, <laughs> yeah, So Vinny Asaro's son, Jerome, took part of the body and <laughs> took some of it upstate, put it in cans, and they tried to destroy it. But they found some of the body there on uh, Jimmy Burke's daughter's property. They found the whole hand. And so uh, they once they found that body, uh, they had this guy named Gaspar Valenti. It was a cousin of Vinny Osaro's. And they caught him on some charges. So what happened is Vinny Osaro, I mean, Gaspar Valenti decided to uh, turn evidence and he wore, he wore wires when he was with Vinny Osaro. And he did like a, a thousand hours of uh, tape and they got a sorrow. So they arrested a sorrow on two things. They arrested him on the murder of cats, but they also arrested him on the uh, Lufthansa heist. Remember that was in Goodfellas? Mm -hmm. You never hear about Vinny Osaro. In reality, Vinny Osaro was very good friends with Jimmy Burke. And so they said he was one of the drivers. So they put Vinny Asaro on trial for the murder of cats because they got him on talking about it on wire and also for the Lufthansa heist. He beat them both and was found not guilty of both of them, despite the fact of all the testimony given by his cousin. He was right. Like, a lot, you know, his cousin sent a lot of people to prison, but this guy was found innocent. But here's how they finally got him. He was a hothead, this guy. He was a degenerate. Uh, Vinny Asaro was a degenerate gambler. And what happened, uh, he was always broke. He was always complaining about being broke. And he and he started hanging around guys that he shouldn't have been hanging around, younger guys that were hotheads. And one of these hotheads was Gene Barilla. Oh, wow. So, and, uh, so he was in a supermarket, and this guy pushed him in a supermarket. It was a guy who was a janitor. So what happened is uh, Vinny Asaro told Gene Barillo to kill him. He said, I want you to put a bullet in his head and kill him. Then Guy started saying to, uh, to Asaro, don't do it. Don't kill him. Send him a message. So what happened is Gene Barillo took a bill. Uh, you know those black uh, billy clubs uh, that the cops carry? Not the billy clubs, the blackjacks. Uh -huh. And so... Gene Barillo beat him in public really bad with the Billy Jack, with the with the Billy Club, uh, the blackjack. I'm sorry, he beat him. He beat him up real bad to send a warning. And then <laughs> this doesn't end. So someone cuts Vinny Asaro off on his way to uh, when he's in the neighborhood. Somebody cuts him off. Uh, so Vinny Asaro gets real mad, takes down the license plates, calls a friend at DMV, and finds out who this guy is. So he decides that he wants this guy to be sent a message. So once again, he sends Gene Barillo. Uh, Gene Barillo and uh, John J. Gotti, that is the nephew of John Gotti. And they, uh, he's driving the car and Gene Barillo takes a, a, a bottle of uh, gasoline that was, uh, it, was uh, um, it was one of those... Uh, drinks uh gatorade bottles you know uh -huh. fills it up with gas is lean buses it on top of the car lights the car on fire and then they got busted on that but then john jay Gotti went down for other charges he went down for being a driver in a, a bank robbery and also dealing drugs in howard beach so john jay Gotti goes gene barillo gene barillo is sitting in jail sees all these other people testifying and he's looking at a shitload of charges. He he decides to flip. And so he flips and he testified against the sorrow. He testified against Ronnie G and uh, Ronnie G is still in prison. Um, John J. Gotti's in prison uh, for another eight years, maybe. And also uh, 
Vinny Asaro was in prison, but remember when COVID broke out? Yeah. So what happened when COVID broke out, they let Vinny Asaro go because he he was a major risk factor. He was in his 80s. He was sick. So he's out of prison now. He went home. Mm -hmm. But that's the story about what happened. In the end, what got Vinny Asaro was his temper for things like someone pushed him in a supermarket that he was arguing with. So he wants that guy taken care of. Mm -hmm. uh, the guy that cuts him off. He literally has this guy. So they got him on arson. Wow. Gene Barolo testified against him with the arson charges. And uh, he didn't testify. He gave, he gave testimony. And when he gave testimony at that time, they seen that they didn't. Uh, Vinny Asaro knew that he was in trouble. And he took a plea. And that's the story behind what happened to Asaro. Um, he was just an interesting character, but he was a cold-blooded killer. Exactly. Remember in the movie, uh, the guy with the hairpiece, when he got the ice pick stuck behind his neck in Goodfellas, when they took him out. To oh, the uh, yeah. Um, Mel. What was his name? Mel. Uh, Maury. He was named Maury. Maury. Yeah. He. Yeah. That was a funny part. Yeah. Yeah. But in real life, his uh, that wasn't his name. His in real life, his name was uh, uh, Martin Krugman. Okay. And so what happened is he just disappeared off the face of the earth. But they also say, and you don't hear this in the movie, Asaro was involved in that murder. He helped get rid of the body. And so the and so he wasn't declared dead until 1986. Wow. And when he was declared finally dead in 1986, his wife got a hundred thousand dollar life insurance. But she she wouldn't get anything in the time that he was that they didn't know where he was or whether he just took off or whatever. And that's the story on him. And, you know, the, you know, these are the little stories you don't hear about. Uh, like the movie Goodfellas is so full of shit. It's like uh, the guy, Henry Hill, was like a big liar and a drug dealer. He wasn't anything that they made him into in the movie. He was a creep. A matter of fact, when he died, no gangsters would even go to his funeral. A lot of it was Hollywood, right? Hollywood movie, big production. Well, they didn't even talk about Vinny Osaro in the movie, and Vinny Osaro was the head of the family in that area. They talked about uh, other people, but they didn't talk about Akaro. I mean, I mean, they didn't talk about uh, Vinny Osaro, which you know they left him out. Which and he was part of the robbery. A lot of people say no, he's not, but the evidence is he is. The FBI thought he was part of the robbery. They tried him for the robbery and he beat the charges. But, you know, he was good friends with Jimmy, you know, with uh, Jimmy Burke. Uh -huh. let, me, let me just show you. And, and, and you know, Robert De Niro played him. So I'm going to show you what he actually looked like. This was the real Jimmy Burke right here. Wow. That's, yeah. And that's, uh, and this is, uh, Jerome Asaro and Vinny Asaro, uh, that's his son. Uh, they were both captains at the same time. They were both captains at the same time in the Bonanno family. And when they went to prison, uh, Ronnie G became uh, captain uh, while they were in. And this is the one that testified against them. Uh, this is the cousin, Gaspar uh, Valenti. He testified against them. And this was... I, there's, I can't find no pictures of uh, this. Is the yeah, that's a Sopranos episode on the right. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah exactly on the right, and then that, yeah, that's the Murray guy when the wig came off in the movie. Uh, that's the guy that played. They called him Maury in Goodfellas, right? But, but that wasn't his real name. His real name was Mark. <laughs> uh, and this is the guy that they strangled with the dog. Uh, this was Cats. The guy that they felt like was a snitch, and they strangled him in 1969. The problem was, was when they put when they put a sorrow on trial for these murders, they were 40 years old. It's very hard to go after somebody with 40 year old murders. And uh, you know what? That's basically the story. I understand that. Uh, from what I understand, Jeff Nadu is doing a complete story. Uh, I believe it's coming up tomorrow, the next day. But Jeff's working on a story about Vinny Asaro, and uh, you really should check that out when Jeff brings it up. Do you watch Jeff at all? No. Okay. 
You're supposed I to. Just, I just go, I like your show. I don't like want to get like involved too deep with any other people. It's just that, I, I, you know, I go sometimes to watch shows, but I don't, nobody else is really important to me. I, I come on your show to have a voice and I like you. So, yeah. So is that the main reason that you decided to be part of my show is that you just like it here? You feel comfortable? Yeah, no, I, it's almost like talking to, a. a uh, my grandfather or something, you know, he's not around. <laughs> or a family member. Hey, people, he just compared me to a grandfather. He couldn't compare me to a father. He decided to compare me to a grandfather. Oh, no pun intended, Lee. Come no, on. I'm, I'm not sensitive. I am a grandfather. Hey, guys, I'm putting down the invite. If anybody wants to jump on with me and Sean, you're more than welcome. Uh, we have 182 here right now. Very good. You know what? Uh, I cannot believe the numbers I'm getting uh, lately. Uh, I mean, over the weekend, I had 340 on uh, on on Super Bowl day, and the day before that, I was at 290, right around that. I mean, I can't believe believe that. You know, what do you think of the game? I like the game. You know, people are crying and whining about the interference at the end of the game, but they don't say nothing about the interference when he grabbed the guy's mask and scored a touchdown. Yeah, they let him play. They let him play, and right at yeah. the end, they were calling penalty, penalty. <laughs> you know what? It, it was a great, it, it was a great game, though. And the reality is, Burrow had a chance to bring the team back, and he didn't. No, he didn't even drive down for a field goal. Exactly. So it's not like that. That play didn't cost him the game. The quarterback not making the big play cost him the game. But it was a great game. You know, it, I I don't like watching games that are blowouts. No, watch great games. Okay, let's see. Okay, Gordon can't stand. See, Gordon, you see that though? I'll let you flip flopper. I'll let you stay here. Okay, because I'm not flip flopping on you, my man. You're more than welcome to stay here in this show. I'm not going to throw you out because uh, you're a simp. Okay. Okay. Uh, New beginnings, uh, Shaolin Finest. Why did you erase your videos? You had me laughing so hard yesterday. Yeah, that's what I don't understand, Shaolin. Why? Don't ever erase. I don't believe anybody should ever erase your videos. If you put a video up, stick with it. Don't take it down. I've never, I've taken down one video in uh, nine months, and that's it. I won't take down any of my videos. Okay, uh, Shaolin says, uh, Jack Jones, I'm calming, calming it down a little. Not worth the headache. And did you guys see Sha uh, Shaolin go on um, FBS's show and tear him a new asshole? I haven't, no. Yeah, he went on there and he tore him a new asshole. And then what happened? FBS took the show down. You know, he, you know, he talks about what a great debater he is. Uh, so during the live show, he, he, he stopped it? No, no, he waited till the show was over, and then he just took it down and it disappeared. Oh, wow. He talks about what a great debater he is. But when he gets smoked, even Sonny Money smoked him. I, I debated him three different occasions. I had no issues with him. And then what he does is he goes out there and he tries to put people on the spot and say, show up on my show. There's no way I will debate him with that low-level, low-life audience that he has debating him. If he wants to debate me, he could do it on a different channel, uh, but it won't be on his. Okay, uh, Frank, I have never – have you ever been on here before? No, Lee. How you doing? Hi, man? Frank. Hi, how are you guys? Good. Lee, a couple, couple of questions, Lee. Yes, go for it. <laughs> Tom asked you the other day about how they had gotten the tapes. So you weren't allowed to tell them that you uh, sent it to Casparosa? What are you talking about? When ha Tom had asked you about, you, uh, how do you know I, How do you know I sent the tapes to Casparosa? Okay, so let's go. Let's say you can't answer that. How about in your earlier shows? Because I watched you from the beginning when you had mentioned when Gene had put you on that website that you hated. Yeah. When they had called you, um, I don't even want to use the word, but it wasn't nice how they used oh, that word against bad you. Stuff. Yeah, absolutely. How you had mentioned, I think Kane Shades was on the show with you also. Yes. How the, you had said, hey, this is not smart. You know, somebody could call your PO or Without start trouble with you. You didn't, did you say that? I sure did. 
Well, okay. So the evidence that that's why I think people are well, trying what to. What evidence? Here's here's I'm going to tell you exactly what I happened. said. That's why people are trying to use that against you. Right. Correct. And I'm going to tell you exactly what happened, my man. And I appreciate mm -hmm. you coming on. Anybody's welcome to do what you're doing right now. No, I'm okay. just asking you honest questions. Right. And I'm going to give you an honest answer right now. When mm -hmm. I got caught up in this, my main my main thing was to go after John A. Light and Gene Barillo. Absolutely. And then when I seen that the people that want me to go after them were just as bad as they were, if not worse. Uh, and that's top, everything that was that, behind the scenes. Huh? Everything that was behind the scenes, you're saying? Yes. Okay. okay. And, and so what happened at that point, I decided, uh, I told Gene about the tapes. So Gene was aware of any of the tapes that I did with him. And so he said, Lee, you know what, man? I'm glad you're my friend. Let's forget about the tapes. And from, so that Gene, point, and from that point on, I stopped taping. So Gene knows you taped him? Absolutely, 100%. Okay. And, see, that's and, what they, and that's what they don't realize, my man. But you're, you're going to say, you're claiming that you never sent the tapes to anyone? No. Is what? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Anything, anything that... Uh, I did was between me, Gene knows what I did, and I told Gene ahead of time, and anything I did, I told Gene, Gene knows about it. And see, this is why Gene and I remain friends, because we knew about this in August. We knew about, we knew about this in August. It's knew about that, what in August? About, the, about me taping him, because I told oh. Gene. So those, those are the things that, that I think that are up in the air that everyone uh, is confused about and no one has the answers until everything comes out, basically. Well, you know what? The last thing anybody wants to do is have me go in the court. Believe me. Because the stories behind this is a lot deeper than people are saying. Everybody in this has been ruthless to a point. You know what? And, and, and that includes me. I did some ruthless shit, dude. But, you know, you got to learn the hard way. And when we first came into this and we first started this, John A. Light and Gene Barilla was everybody's enemy. And, you know, J Kane Shade was on my show with me. When I told Kane Shade that I mean, am no longer going to uh, go after John A. Light and Gene Barilla, he decided not to be my friend no more. And that's just the way it is. Well, I mean, he, sta he stands on the side that he doesn't want to speak to any be a part of any of those people yeah okay but you know what so that's his stand for that right yeah and i respect that and i respect and i respect that you don't hear me on here bashing cane shade cane shade has his own thing whatever cane shade wants to do on his show he was a friend with me no i'm not no you. i'm not saying bashing him i'm saying but he said from the beginning that if you deal with any of those people he didn't want to be a part of it so i'm saying you can't blame him for that well, what I do blame him about is when he came back and we do the football show together and he knew that I was friends with them. And then people started getting on his case about being my friend because we stayed friends all that time. But in the end, well, I mean, I think pushback that's the whole was more important. Let me finish, please. Pushback that's... was more pushback was more important to him than friendship. That's what it comes down to. Yes, that. That's what I was going to say. The people from pushback, which to me is, it's totally ass backwards the way it's being done, but that's just my opinion. So, I mean, that's, you know, I think that's what got into his ear. So that's, oh, I without agree a doubt. on that one. Without a doubt. And, and the thing that bothers me more than anything is that a lot of these people that are associated, uh, well, not a lot of them, a few that were associated with pushback were also associated with rats and people knew it, but it didn't matter. And that's the issue that I what I don't understand about what I don't understand about pushback is you're you're saying that there are rats out there that lie on the stand to get other people in trouble. But if there's a rat out there that has never lied, has told the truth on the stand, his whole testimony, why would you go after him? He has not put anybody in jail with a lie. He has told the truth. Yes, you could say he's a rat, but he's not a lying rat. So why would you go after somebody who hasn't lied on his testimony? That's where I find pushback to be. And, and let me, up. And, Excuse my language. Let me ask Sorry, you this. 
<laughs> That's a good question. Let me ask you another question. Um, okay, Gene Barillo, people will say, oh, he was no gangster. He didn't know anybody. But yet his testimony put away two of the most powerful gangsters on the street, Ronnie G and Vinny Osario. So how okay. can these people say that he wasn't a gangster? Well, who's saying he wasn't a gangster? Well, I'm was he a gangster? Go. Was he a gangster or was he an associate? Is there is, associates, you know what I'm most, associates, most associates are gangsters. Listen, Just because you're no, not made doesn't mean you're not a gangster. No, no, but was he was he with someone or was he terrorizing a neighborhood? That's what it comes down to. And until you have proof all gangsters terrorize, people, dude, all gangsters yes, terrorize neighborhoods. I understand, but that's what I'm saying. So yes, I can't see how he's not a gangster. I don't I think the problem is they're not nobody's saying people aren't gangsters. They're portraying themselves to be a lot worse or a lot higher than what they are. John A. Light, to me, was out there. I know people that said he was out there. John A. Light he knew people. But but he puts himself in places that there was no way he could be. Without a doubt. Without so a doubt. Oh, my God. So okay, hey, let me, so I, dude, let me be honest with you. I don't like John A. Light. I don't like John A. Light. I know John A. Light. But I don't. He's not my friend. I have nothing to do with him. But the same thing That's with Gene. It. I think I think Gene, people know Gene was out there, but I think they feel like Gene puts himself a lot higher than what he was. And I think I they disagree, all do that. dude. I'm sorry. I disagree with that. When you're when you're working for Vinny Asaro and you're working for Ronnie G and you're doing things out in the street, it's obvious. You got to remember what family he came from and who his uncle was. He came yes. from gangsters, my man. Yes, so but I'm saying a lot of them portray themselves to be bigger than what they are. So but maybe that's the problem gangster, people have with Gene. But doesn't every gangster? Yes, so maybe that's the problem they have with Gene, like the same yeah. problem that everybody has with Eli. Yeah, but same most thing. of these guys, most of these guys that talk shit about Gene wouldn't say it to his face. They're here. I don't think they're here on think, these keyboards being tough guys. They I don't are think, keyboard tough guys. <laughs> Honestly, I don't think any of you believe you. That's my opinion. I don't think any of you would say anything to these people's faces because it would start a fight and a brawl between all of you. So I don't think anybody, even you, any, everybody would not dude, say anything I, to anybody's see, face. I'm not dude, I worked with John and Giorgio. Okay, I understand who gangsters are. I've been around gangsters. These other guys haven't been. You know, living in the fucking woods in Pennsylvania or something like that doesn't make uh, listen, you, you know shit. Look, listen, I'm not going to get in between. I, I'll be honest, totally honest with you. I am an FBS fan. I, I love FBS. Me and you, I've spoken to you a couple of times on the phone, you know, and I tell you all the time, when you do your mob shows, Lee, I watch you. When this other bullshit, I can't. You know what I mean? And I'm being totally honest with you. But, yeah, uh, but let me ask you a question. Here's the difference between my show and FBS's show. I let you come on this show and say your piece. If anybody disagrees with him and goes on and say his piece, Carlos, the wrench whore, will block him. You're not, not allowed really. to say anything. No. You're not allowed to say no, no. anything in that chat room. No. Can I chime no. in? Can I no. chime no. in for a moment? That's, that's, I want to look, 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 look. Let me so get you, my piece in after you, though. Okay. That's fine. Let me get my say after you. Dude, I'm letting you talk as much as you want. No, no, no. I'm saying okay. after, after him. Okay. My name my name's Sean. Okay, nice yeah, to meet you. Sean, I'm sorry. Nice to meet you, Sean. No, it's okay. So you you have some type of you're on the left or the right or the middle, but you have to realize that this is YouTube. This isn't the streets, right? And the streets are the streets. Right? Now, these people that come on YouTube, they reinvent themselves for financial gain. And these content creators do the same for financial gain. Gain. They're not working class people. You might be a working class person, but I think you know FBS, and I think you have some type of influence with this man. My opinion. What do you mean influence? I think you know him. You're a big fan of his show. Maybe you guys have phone numbers and talk. I know him through... The show, just like I know Lee for the show. I, Lee, have I spoken to you off of the show? Now, let me ask. You, yeah, and let me ask you a question. So, what do you? I, think, I just stand in the middle. I, let I me like ask you a question. Show. I like the entertainment. Let me ask you a question. 
What do you think about him every night doing a show attacking me? Listen, every night. You guys, okay, Lee. I'm not doing what anything. I said to you like a couple of months ago. What did I say a couple of months ago? I says I find it hysterical. This thing has become a soap opera. What did I say to you? You could actually start a mob show around you guys and make it a comedy mob show. That's how hysterical it's gotten. Okay, you guys attack each other all day Dude. long. You say terrible things about no, each other all day that's long, bullshit, and then dude, that's bullshit. and then people no 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 no, no 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 let me speak no you're, and you're people defend no, themselves no let me say something for one second themselves dude I'm gonna defend mute themselves you. let me talk let me talk. let me talk please remember yeah. this is my show let me talk okay you Absolutely watch this dude I'm gonna mute you let me talk okay so listen you everybody that watches this show and they've watched my last three shows four shows. They know I barely mentioned this fucking punk. I barely mentioned him. And he'll have a show, not tonight though, but he'll have a show, if not tonight, the one after it, literally a whole show talking about my personal life at home. You've never heard me talk about his personal life? I would never do that. Um, I don't see him talking about your personal life as much as you don't when you see do a him. show. Let me finish. When you do a show, he tries to rip everything apart that you say in the no, show. No, 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 no. Oh, and oh, then, oh, by saying and that then I he'll stole... go and make, and then he'll go and make fun of you after. That. Okay, by saying that I, I took a credit card from my girlfriend, a lie. By saying that I live, that I live uh, off uh, welfare checks, that I, I, I live, I pay low rents, I don't have a car, on and on and on. That's what he says. You're defending a guy that has no content on his show. None. So you've so you've never said terrible things about him or his wife? His wife is on the show attacking me. Okay, but that's not what I asked you. I said, have you ever said terrible no. things about him or his wife? Nothing no. terrible about his wife. No. Nope. Tell me I'm something said terrible about his wife. Tell me something. Do All right, listen, Lee. You, you, I'm going to listen to me. I'm going to go because I don't want to disrespect your show. I asked you a couple of Dude, questions that I wanted to ask you in the something. beginning. If you find him, if you find him content, and if that's what you like, I'd rather have you go. No, I want to say see, something I'm, to you I'm before you leave. I'm being no, nice no, to you, Lee. No, 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 I understand that. Nice to you. I want to, no, no, hold on, Lee. Hold on, hold on. I want to talk to him for a minute. Here's a man that said, that says he's in recovery, and then he goes on his show and calls people junkies and drug addicts. What kind of person's that when he claims okay, so that wait. he's in recovery? Seriously. Okay, wait a second. So hold on a second. Wait. Now, who are you saying that he calls people junkies and, and, and on his show? Who he to? talks about who? Okay. Who? Who? Tell me who. I don't watch his show that much, but I'm telling you what the man so says. How do, you, how do you know? If you don't watch his show, how do you know? Look, clips. Do you know? He, okay, look. He's gone. He's lost. I'm no, but deal, Lee. I'm not going to deal with a guy from FBS. This guy is so blind. Lee, this you guy... have to realize he claims that he's in recovery and then he calls people drug addicts and this and that. How can you do that if you're in recovery? What oh, kind of person are you at a meeting? Dude, I don't even take drugs. I'm not on no pain medication ever, but every show he does it. But see, that's the perfect example of who the, the people are that like him. That's it. He did not want to hear me say, what about him doing shows about me every night? He's been doing a show about me every night for how long now? You know, and this show wasn't about him, but that is just your perfect. And if, and people, I kicked him from the studio. I didn't ban him from the audience. Okay. But when he's on here, literally kissing the hell out of a guy that has no content show, this is a guy that cannot tell you about who he has on as a guest tonight because he's afraid that people will get a hold of them and tell who this guy is. And that's the only defense he had. It's like, how yeah. do you know? How do you know? Well, it's been said. It's yeah. been, you know what I mean? Okay. If that guy was a total of whack job. He was a whack that job. Is your whack a dude. That is your typical FBS watcher right there. That's it. That's They're it. wax. They're odd leftist weirdos that's what they are okay jc i mean that you are revealing enough information about it <laughs> guys i'm gonna catch up here because uh 
my daughter gives me a hard time when I get way behind. Yeah. God forbid. Yeah. Well, she, she busts my chops because I get way behind sometimes. Really? You know what? My chat room is very active. I have 191 people. We wow. Almost 200. People. We've been over 200 for about a half hour. Oh, that's great. Okay. Mickey Griggs. This is another guy that is a big don't, FBS don't, fan. Don't I let him in here. Whoa. I'm reading the screen with Lee's glasses. So put your phone up. Okay. I'm reading. Mickey. Tiffany, relax. <laughs> Go ahead, Lee. Mickey, you read with my glasses. Let me tell you something about my glasses. You see these glasses right here? You know what these are? Uh, these are reading glasses that I spent $6 on at the dollar store. That's what these are. These aren't my regular glasses. I don't wear regular glasses. My eyesight's pretty good except for reading. Just so you do know. Uh, I have trouble seeing close up, but my eyes are sharp as can be long distance, Mickey. But you know what? I'll let you make fun of my glasses. Hey, Neutral Drop, I'd just like to say hi to you. And uh, I love your channel, by the way. Um, and if you guys go to Neutral Drop, uh, subscribe to his channel. It's really interesting. It's a car. It's a car channel, but it's really good stuff. Uh, actually, he has quite a few uh, subscribers, a lot more than me. Um, neutral drop, I just figured I'd throw that in there for you. Okay, Tony makes his followers bend over for... Okay, well, we're not going to talk about that guy right now. Now, see, I don't have no problem with that guy coming on. But when he refuses to admit that this guy... It would, what FBS does literally every night attacks me, literally, and my personal life. And then the first thing that he'll say is he'll defend F FBS's wife, who gets on the show and attacks people now. She literally attacks people now. Anyone who associates with Sean, the Oompa Loompa, has no respect for themselves. Thus, uh, I you got to lick, you got to lick it, the paper. Oh, she's trying to roll a cigarette. I'm, I apologize. A uh, cigarette, my ass. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a special cigarette? No, not the, no, no, no. Those are only at nighttime. <laughs> no. Uh, so, do you smoke? At nighttime, a little bit because I get panic attacks. That's why you smoke. Stop making. No, it. no, I, I shouldn't. But when I do, sometimes uh, weed, or weed I, I get panic attacks. Let me ask you a question. Do you smoke weed when you're about to go to work? No, 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 no. You see, I, I couldn't smoke weed when I when I used to go to you know, go to work because I was actually a cook and, uh, you know, very busy places, which you said your place is very busy. And when you smoke weed and you're stoned and you're trying to cook, uh, it's so easy. Oh, no. Yeah. Hey, that statement. What? What? What did this statement mean? Can you read this again? Which one? This. This. Anyone who associates with what? Sean, you're hear. talking about Sean McCarthy. Tony, oh. And Oompa Loompa. Oh. Oompa Loompa is FBS. Parasite Slayer is a regular guy. You know, he he sees through. Uh, he sees through the big picture that uh, all about FBS. How was everyone's Valentine's Day? Mine sucked. My girlfriend's family would let me see her because she's 13 and I'm 30. Whoa. Whoa, dude. Dude, whoa. I hope you're I hope you're joking. I hope you're yeah. Joking. Because if that's true, dude, but I don't think it's true. <laughs> but you know what's funny though? Not funny, but it's sad. That's true a lot. I mean, you got these 13, 14, 15 year old kids, you know. I remember when my daughter was growing up, that's what these guys do. They prey on these young girls. And a lot of these young girls look a lot of, Gordon, you're still here. Lee is too scared to debate. <laughs> hey, Gordon, I'll make you a deal. You come on my show right now and we'll debate. How's that? I'll drop the link right now. We just had the FBS lover in here, literally a lover. I'm surprised he doesn't like walk around with his underwear and his 
back pocket or something. Here's the link. Anybody's welcome on the show, including FBS people. If you're here right now, you're more than welcome to come on and ask me whatever questions you want to ask. Oh, I would love for him to come on the show. Who's that? Gordon? The other guy. Oh, Gordon can't stand Lee's mole, that guy? Yeah, no, the other guy. FBS? The other, yeah, the other guy. Yeah. Okay. Oh. DK, Lee, what's going, going on, on, bro? How you doing? Good. How you doing? <laughs> Uh, was that Frank Drevin that was just on here? I don't know who the fuck it that was. That porky pig looking motherfucker with an ass for a fucking chin. Was that him? <laughs> okay. He'll get a kick in his fucking ass, meaning his fucking chin. That's what he'll get. <laughs> if that's the guy slandering me all over YouTube. Oh, he was? He's a fucking mess. Oh, yeah. yeah. And look, he didn't, want, he didn't even want to a answer no questions about FBS literally attacks me every night on his show. Every fucking night. They'll never admit it. They're a bunch of fucking losers, all FBS's people. Most of them, I should say. Most of them. And what do you think about them all getting together now with this one big alliance? With people They're a bunch that... of jerk-offs. That's it. That's what I think of them. Do you remember Simple the as shit... that. Do you remember the shit that Tony used to say about FBS's wife? And FBS would say that I would never be friends with him? FBS is a bullshit artist. We all know oh. that, too. <laughs> oh, my gosh. The biggest so bullshit like... around here. So what did you think about him taking down the show that you that when you abused him that night? He's a coward. He's a coward. Because anytime somebody fucking hands him his ass in his hands, okay, he fucking deletes it and claims to be king of some shit, but he's not king of anything. And what was the discussion about? What did you guys talk about? What did we talk? He, listen, he fucking started talking shit about me and Joe, and I just went mm -hmm. on and defended us. He's not used to that. He's not used mm -hmm. to getting, getting put in his fucking place. You, you, and you did a great, you did a great job, you know. Oh, I know I did. You know, you made you you made a lot of people proud, you know. And you know, people he he overestimated. I've debated that guy three times, had no issues with him, but I refused to go on his show because of the scumbags in his chat room. They're semi-retarded. They are. They really are. And that's all I they mean, could do was all fucking join up and try to attack somebody and create fake accounts on people. That's what they do. That's what so they what do. What do you think of the wrench whore? Carlos? Yeah, Carlos. I'm actually cool with Carlos now. We had a little problem, but we squashed it. At the end of the day, I'm going to be honest about him. He's not a bad guy. Yeah, he he's started a, up. He started he's loyal up to a show. fault. He's loyal to a fault. That's his problem. He's loyal to the wrong people, too. Yeah, you know, and it, but you're right. At least you're honest about it. You know, you know Carlos, I am honest. I don't lie on people, Lee. I don't do that. And Carlos started on with my show from the very beginning i don't know if you remember when we first started it was kane shade me and and uh fbs when he was normal yeah vaguely i remember a little of that yeah, i came totally in a little after he was a totally different guy then all of a sudden uh he hit a thousand subs and he started yep. acting like he uh his head had, became um, a brave paparazzi's. this yep. guy thinks he has paparazzi's outside behind the bushes he's fucking delusional yeah when he, he bought his side, subs we know that too so please with him yeah, he's waiting for the paparazzi to jump out of the from behind the bushes when he goes. And he's going to be waiting a long time. He better grab a snicker bar. <laughs> so, what do you think about him being scared about telling people who is coming on his show to be interviewed? He won't even advertise it. Well, he thinks people are going to try to shut the interview down. <laughs> well, that you know, doesn't that kind of show that he knows that he he really fucked up by going out to Josie, a woman, the way he oh, did. Oh yeah, he knows he's a scumbag. Yeah, it's written all over his face. So, you know, so tonight his show will be, did you see BK Challenge on Lee Cole show? You know, that will be his show tonight. Yeah. And he'll slander me some more with all lies. He doesn't know me from a fucking hole in the wall. Yeah, he doesn't know any of us from a hole in the wall. That's he just lies. Situation. He makes things up. He's a fucking you know, Walt, fat Walt Disney. And you want to hear something, guys? Over the weekend, I did two shows and they equaled his five shows. How well, much do you think that bothers him? Well, his show definitely his, bothers him. His, his show's going down. Without a doubt. His numbers are plummeting. He's you know gonna be it? his own destruction in the end. Yep. Just yeah, sit back and, and watch. He, and he and he doesn't understand. You know, I remember when I came on here and I told everybody that he was that he was a leftist, he was an atheist, and he stood there and argued with me and told me no, he wasn't. And everything I said he was, he was. 
and he didn't understand in this genre, 80% of this genre is not to the left. And personally, I don't give a shit if people are to the left. But when you're like him, it's not even left. It's like he hates everything. You, you hate God. You hate your country. You hate being white. I mean, that is FBS. He's the odd man big. out. That's what he yeah. is. Yeah. Those are guys. I gotta run. Go. All right, my dogs are fucking bothering me to go outside. Oh, BK Charlie, you're welcome anytime. I appreciate you coming on, man. No problem, Lee. Anytime. You take care bro. of yourself. Take okay, care. Bye. bye. See, that's the great thing about when I do these shows. We have 218 here right now, people. That's great. Keep coming in. Keep coming in. That really pisses somebody off. Keep coming in. Uh, <laughs> So no, I would like I would like for him to come on the show and explain that he says he's in recovery. How can you talk about your fellow people in recovery and call them drug addicts? How can you how do about, that? How about this? How about the fact that he uses a pit he talks about recovery, but then he uses a picture of Tony Montana with cocaine around him in one of his thumbnails. Right. You know, you're in recovery. You know, though none of these guys, you don't act like that and be in recovery. No, that's part of your illness. Part of your, your personality and the way you act is part of your illness when it comes to drugs. And when you're ruthless and mean and you continuously attack people, you are not in any type of rehab. What's going to happen is sooner or later, you're going to you're going to fall off. That's what's going to happen. And, you know, and when you call other people druggies, I'm a, you know, I'm the. I almost wish I was a druggie just so I can be high. <laughs> but, but I'm not, you know, I don't even smoke weed. I smoke weed until I was 50 years old. Wow. You know, my whole life I smoked weed. What do you think? I moved to Colorado for no reason. You know, it's, you know, and then when I turned 50 years old, I got to the point I was just, you know, when I smoke weed, I have a bottomless stomach. I can eat and eat. I'm too far right. eating all the time. And boy, I could eat. And when I got my bariatric surgery, uh, I was well over 500 pounds and uh, I ate like a pig. It was nonstop. It was nonstop. The surgery saved my life. I'm still a big guy, but the surgery saved my life. And, you know, my my biggest health, my biggest health issue right now is I could lose some weight, but I got a good heart. My blood pressure is good. I'm on some medication, but minor medication. Uh, my family has a uh, long life expectancy and we're large people. Right. Unfortunately, you know, in my family, you know, it's like a lot of families. We've had a couple overdose from drugs and we had uh, suicide. Well, just keep up the good fight, Lee, you know, yeah. keep up the good fight one day at a time, man. And, you know, I love the show. I love the fact right now that we're here bullshitting and we have 220 people here on a, uh, well, it's one just about one thirty uh, Midwest time, and I can't ask for more than that. Okay, I'm going to take a try to catch up here and take some of these things. Sean, you know you're more than welcome to show up on the show on Tuesday anytime you want. If you want? To yeah, on my on a lunch break. Are you on lunch break right now? No, 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 no. Tuesdays and Wednesdays are my day as days right. off. But any other day I see you, I could go on a lunch break, but I appreciate that whenever you have like a Tuesday or Wednesday, I could come on. That'd be nice. Here's another great guy, Matt, Matt Collier. I hope I'm saying that right, Matt, but, uh, why do all these, uh, FBS simps coming here and talking tough? We know you guys aren't ever meeting up for real. You just sound pathetic. Exactly. Well, Harvester of the Sorrow. Dis, har, I, I blocked Harvest of the Sorrow quite a uh, some time back. We had issues, but now we get along great. Uh, I unblocked him, and he's been very respectful. Like he's saying, smash the like button. He's in here. Um, I have a lot of people that used to not like me, and now they're part of the show. And here's a really stand-up guy, Vinny Green. Vinny, I hope you're doing good, my man. I know that I'm 20 minutes behind in the chats, but I'm not sure if you're still here, but uh, how you doing, Vinny? Okay. Then we got uh, Simpin' Ain't Easy, Paps, 2024. You know, <laughs> I'm not sure. I think that I'm going to get behind uh, Ron DeSantis in 2024. I don't want no more old people in the White House, you know? So I think 
I'm a Donald Trump guy. I love Donald Trump. But he's going to be 78 years old. I mean, do we want another 78 year old in the White House? Or do we yeah. want. Something? Yes, no. we do. Yes, we do. And you know something? How about this for a ticket? Donald Trump with Ron DeSantis as vice president. Oh, that'd be something. Because if something happened to Donald Trump, at least you know the guy taking over would be a damn good president. I or would like Donald Trump, Ivanka Trump. No. Yes. Why not? The rest of that family, they're a bunch of liberals. I mean, they're nothing like their father. They're no, not, Well, they're good people. You know, just because their father's Donald Trump doesn't make them qualified. That's why I, I think they're good people. You can judge a man by their children. A man can be judged by how their children are. And if you look at his children, and that just goes for Barack Obama, too, whether you like him or not. His kids still look like good kids, and they go to good schools. Yes. We have good grades. Right. So if you're going to judge Barack Obama as a father, you've got to look at his children. Great kids. You know, and if you're going to judge Joe Biden by his kids, he had one great kid who died of a brain tumor. He was a military man. Uh, Bo Biden, very sad story. But then his other son marries Bo Biden's wife. Wow. You know, so you got this guy who's smoking on the crack pipe, has hookers everywhere, impregnated a hooker down south, and married his brother's wife. That is Joe Biden. Okay. And you never hear about that, you know. Bill Jordan, yeah, Jimmy Burke was probably one of the most smartest gangsters because he didn't have an alliance to one family plus. He was able to do what he wanted. You know something, Bill? That's a great point. The fact that Jimmy Burke was Irish and the Italian mob respected him so much. He died in prison. No one ever killed him. He was feared. The Italians feared him. And uh, a lot of Italian guys in the street loved him. So Jimmy Burke, when you really think about badass gangsters, Jimmy Burke was one of them. Definitely had pizza rolls while you watched the game. Okay, I don't, I don't know what that means, Kevin Bacon. But I didn't have pizza rolls. I had actual pizza. You know what I do? What kind of pizza do? You, if you're gonna buy frozen pizza, say you have no choice. What, what what's your favorite kind? Oh wow! Well. Uh, DiGiorno or Red Baron? I'm... I like <laughs> my pizza. Got to be thin crust. I don't like yeah. Pork. You know, and that's what I miss about New York: thin crust pizza. You know, that's. Have you ever been to New York, Sean? No. And are you ever thinking about going there? No. You're not missing. <laughs> You're not missing anything anymore. I mean, New York. <laughs> no, like, no, I don't want to go. You know, my, my family has a plot in Nassau Knowles uh, up in Long Island. It's a family plot. There's 12, 12 coals buried there. And uh, I would love to go see that, but I hate the idea of going to New York anymore because of what it's like now. It's nothing like, you know, I left New York. The last time I was in New York was 2001. Wow, you know, and that—that's the last time I would—I was there when the tower got hit, uh, and I was up in Peekskill, New York, and I—I I, all I remember is Peekskill, New York was is about thirty miles from the towers, but you could smell in the air that that smell of death, thirty miles away in Westchester County. Check out the undisputed king of MobTube, Lee Cole Three. Yes, MobTubers.com, people. The website's doing great, and here's something that new that we started. Antonina and I, we started. Uh, we now review restaurants in Brooklyn and around there. Uh, I got people that live there that actually go to the restaurants, and we give honest reviews. Um I have a Spumoni Tavern being done this week, um, and we're going to do it once a week. We're going to put a different restaurant in. I call up the restaurant. I talk to the owners, tell them I'm going to put them on my page, and uh, 
And also, I have also set up, have you heard of the 6666 Ranch? Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Did you film already? No, I'll be doing that this week. I'm glad you asked. So I'll be going to the 6666 Ranch. And when you go there, they have a little store. It's like an outpost. You actually uh -huh. go on the ranch. And they gave me permission to film. So I'm going to do like a half hour filming. And we're going to talk about the horses they have there. They have a horse ranch. They stud farm, lots of cattle. But it's also one of the biggest ranches in the world. And uh, as you know, they shoot part of Yellowstone there too. So uh, I finally got that final level of permission that I needed. The gentleman called me and said, sure, come on up. And they're going to have a guide go around with me and talk to me about the ranch. And I'm going to film it. And I'm going to put it, I'm going to drop it on the channel. And I'm really looking forward to doing that. Yeah, me too. So it'll be like a little mini documentary. Yeah. I'll probably take like 30 minutes and just film it and uh, go from there. But I'm really looking forward to it. That's great. I've never, you know, I've never been on the ranch, but you need permission. They got security when you first go on that ranch. I mean, you got to remember they're a huge food supplier in this area. Uh, and one of the great things about living in my area is I can look out my back window and I'll see a farm with cattle there. And, mm -hmm. you know, I can go to the, uh, I can go and buy like a half a cow, a quarter of a cow and put it in a freezer. And the prices you get here for a cow is a lot cheaper than say you were buying it. in, especially on the East coast, uh, Standard Brothers, Walmart. Oh, you see the price of uh, of a prime. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, not prime rib. Uh, ribeye, ribeye steak. You see the price of it at Walmart, and they don't even. It, their price is higher than a lot of butcher shops, and they don't even use the highest grade of meat. They use like a a, a second tier level of meat, and uh, a lot of people. Uh, don't realize that you're not buying the best. If you're gonna buy, if you're gonna buy a steak, don't buy it at Walmart. <laughs> Just go to a meat store or something. Just don't buy your steaks at Walmart. Exactly. Okay, let me see. Fun fact: Conway, his name in Goodfellas is actually Jimmy Burke's real surname. Brooks uh, Burke was his adopted name. Thank you, James, for giving us that piece of information. Okay, just wondering uh, when this fat guy is going to eat. Kevin, do you have a... Listen, I don't mind you joking on me and chopping me up and stuff, but do you have something better? I mean, that's the second time you use that line. What a disappointment. Jesse, that's why we only debate you on his show so he can control and delete it. Exactly. If he loses... Like when uh, BK Shallon whipped his ass and Sonny Money whipped his ass, what did he do? You know, he was making fun of Sonny Money. Sonny Money went on there and smoked him. Did you see that show when Sonny smoked him? No. Oh, Sonny just tore him up. But then he'll tell everybody, you're going to come on this show. And what is he, when he starts making fun of people, he goes, I'm going to decimate him now, people. Are you ready? And he doesn't realize the only people listening to him are those morons on his show. Yeah, and, and the sick part, you know, and I'm going to leave the other guy. I'm not going to say anything more. When when he was wishing death on, on people, that's that's uh, that's something, man. Yeah, he literally wished that I would die. He wished that Josie would die. He wished that uh, Vinny would die. Uh, Tom Levecki. He's literally said this on his show where he wishes death on people. I mean, that tells you everything you need to know about a human. Because what happens when you start doing that to people? It's called karma. Shit comes around and hits you back. Lee, you want to know why I'm healthy? Because I woke up today. You want to know why I'm healthy? Because my mom woke up today. I'm wealthy because my girlfriend woke up today. People that I love woke up today. I, I just don't understand this guy when people wish death on people. Now, here we got Jane Perry. Jane is... Uh, Jane says, Lee, you sent the tapes to Tanya, you spelled the name wrong, who was on Cas Barza, you spelled that name wrong, and Angel Side then knows, know the players. 
Jane, you got all your facts wrong there. Okay. Uh, the tapes that I sent to Tanya were tapes on Jimmy A. Light. Those are the only tapes that were sent to Tanya. And she played those tapes. Why? Because I dislike Jimmy with a passion. Okay. Just so you do know that. And as for Casparza, I don't know who that is. If you mean Casparosa, okay. Uh, so anything between me and uh, Casparosa is between me and Casparosa. But the fact of the matter is that Gene knew all about being taped. It was no surprise. He knew the tapes were there. He knew an eventual lawsuit was going to come out. And he knew uh, there was no surprises. So if people think that Gene got surprised, he didn't get surprised. How's he doing? Is he doing okay? He's working. Yeah, that's great. You know, trying to keep his life, get his life together. Uh, you know, you can only wish people the best. You know, people yeah. make mistakes in their life. And if he doesn't get together, it's on, if he doesn't get his life together, that's on him. It's that simple. Yeah, a lot of these ones, you want to see success stories. You want to see people change their life. You know, you want to see things like that, good things. Uh, Matt said that, yeah, I, I didn't cut that guy off until he proved that he was just a 100% FBS simp. He didn't want to hear no stories, and he he carried a pair of uh, FBS's uh, underwear in his back pocket. If Jabba was stranded uh, on a desert island, he wouldn't have to search for food for a month. Okay, so our tur uh, turd bird, are you calling me Jabba? <laughs> but you know what? That's the thing, though. Those people are allowed to come here and they can say what they want to say. As long as that's that's not bad, you know. If they don't say something really nasty, they can say whatever they say. Like Mickey Griggs, I like Mickey Griggs. Mickey Griggs uh, talks to me on uh, Twitter. And then he says things like this here. Lee was probably Gene's pen pal. Oh, no, wow. Gene's pen pal. I could pick up the phone and actually talk to Gene on the phone. Okay? At least I don't hide that. Do you know who introduced me to Gene and Hootie? F who? Really? Yes. He's the one that told me. He was talking to them before anybody was. That is the guy that talks so badly about these guys, but yet at one time he was their friends. That's who the real FBS is, people. Everyone, take this as a lesson. Do not speak to people on this community on the on the phone. Uh, does that mean you too? My daughter thinks she knows everything. Has so, she ever been on your show? No, she is what she is. And she doesn't deny what she is. You know. But they're going after her viciously. But it's not going to help. I mean, she's a lot smarter than they are. Yeah, she's yeah. pretty smart. Okay, Jack Jones. So Gene has no problem that you recorded him. How do you think they got to Casparosa? Uh, why don't you ask Casparosa, Jack Jones? And uh, on top of that, no, Gene knows all about him being recorded. He knows all about every one of them. But, you know, we have a little issue now. Uh there's more behind this story that's happening right now that I can't talk about, but there's other people that have become involved in this story now. And, you know, not the media, actually the people that have become involved in this story now are the last people that you want involved in this story, but they're now involved. Wow. Yeah. The recordings was a rap move, but the people who hand it and the authorities are the rat fuck Tonto, but he's a scumbag, has new beginnings, and MRE are saying don't trust anybody on here. And see, Grant, Grant has been on this show for a long time. Grant disagrees with me on some things, but I respect what Grant has to say. You know why? 
because he's always been very loyal to me. End of story. And he's not going to change his opinion because I might disagree with him. Okay, Mickey Griggs spoke with uh, D. Allen Brock a lot about... Uh, what do you think about that whole thing with D. Allen Brock? I don't know it. Okay, D. Allen Brock pretend the house was on fire, that it was his house. It turned out it wasn't his house. He was getting donations from people. Uh, and he was doing it by pretending that his house burnt down. Oh, like a fake GoFundMe, like a fake GoFundMe type well, he had thing. people that were actually giving him money here, and they were just sending him money. So oh, that's and wrong. They, yeah. And, and then some people said, you know what's funny about that whole thing? Uh, New Beginnings told me from the very beginning, I remember when she got a hold of me, uh, the very first time she said to me, just so you do know, uh, this is a scam. And I didn't believe her. But she knew from the very beginning that it was a scam. And then people tried to tie her into, well, you, we know who, to no, she knew before anybody that it was a scam because that's what the, these trolls, they know. They know things that we don't know because they see things behind the scenes. And you know what? New Beginnings called it right, right from the very beginning. Bill Jordan, what I don't understand, uh, why would Gene be okay with that if I was saying I would be pissed off about the way that it would have told to destroy the tapes right away? Bill, just so you know, Gene wasn't okay about it. Gene knew about it. See, when Gene and I talked about it, I told Gene point blank what I did. And I didn't want it to be any surprises. And so he knew. I apologized to him and he apologized to me because he did a lot of things to me. He put some stuff up that he shouldn't have done. So it was tit for tat. But once we got to know each other, that stuff's all in the past between us two. He's really not a bad guy. He's a likable guy, right? He's a likable guy, but I can't say he's not a bad guy. I mean, he's done some bad things, you know. We we, we hope that he doesn't do bad things anymore because if he does bad things anymore, he will wind up in prison for the rest of his life. Yeah. I mean, he's looking at big time if he fucks up. It's not like you, you or I, if we fuck up, we might be looking at a, at a year or two. I mean, this guy's looking at going to jail for the rest of his life. Well, they would probably let us out like they're letting everybody else out. So, <laughs> so especially if, if I just tell him I'm an old man. Pushback don't do shit or make any real sense. Matt, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not here to knock pushback. There's a lot of people that agree with pushback, uh, so I'm not going to knock them because I think there's a good intention behind what they want to do. I just disagree that some of the things that are said about people behind their backs, that's it. Basically, Lee and Gene walked into a major legal problem, but Lee will get views. Jack, I can guarantee you one thing. I have no legal issues. Gene has no legal issues. The people who have legal issues, well, you'll see, you'll learn. There's a lot of things that I know that you don't know, Jack. See, what you're doing, Jack, is you're listening to your little fanboy, well, to your little guy over there. But what's going on is not what he says, says is going on. So that kind of makes you just kind of stupid. Okay, $5 from Paulie. Lee, I want to come on uh, on day to tell you where I came from and my background. Please read the message I sent you on here. Thanks. Paulie Canarsie guy. Okay. As long as you're not a Canarsie fan, I have no problem with that. Uh, Mickey Griggs, I'm doing pretty good, MB. I'm just chugging along one day at a time until my maker calls me home. See, that's what I like about Mickey. Mickey and I disagree on a lot of things, but he's always respectful to the people in the room, in the chat room. So, you rather than your best friend, Lee, just accept it as fact. He's my best friend? You don't, I rather than my best friend? <laughs> uh, 
Are you? Can you see me? Or are you froze up? Yeah. Okay. I fro. Well, it says 4G. My internet's messing up. Oh. Lee, you should get a lawyer for your big de deposition. I've done. De I've done lots of depositions before. I've been involved with some very big cases before. I know exactly what I need to do, and what the rules are, and what's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen with me. The only people I got to worry about are feds. If the feds get involved in this case, uh, and if the feds get involved in this case, it won't be going after me. Okay. So just so you do know that. No such thing as a good rat. Okay. Bill Jordan and Gene. Uh, Gene did things to Lee. Lee did things to Gene. They moved on. You know what? That's why my kid is my daughter. You couldn't have said it better. That's it. We did things to each other. You know, when we get on here, we're told, we're told by certain people who the enemy is. And I'll be honest with you. John A. Light ain't my enemy. John A. Light ain't my friend. You know, and this whole thing that people used to talk about John A. Light John A. Light's sitting back and laughing as people here are just tearing each other apart. He's laughing his ass off. I was told not to talk to Sammy Gavano. I did videotapes against Sammy Gavano. And uh, Sammy Gavano knew I was doing these videos and actually talked to me on the phone and threatened to put his foot up my ass. So at wow. least I know... Sammy was listening to me. Okay, Chuck, you are the most important part of this lawsuit, buddy. Hey, that's cool if I am, because that would be really good. But this, that'd be a really good story. But unfortunately, I'm not the most important part of the lawsuit. Name me a rat who didn't lie to save their own ass, but I agree they all play up their roles. Yeah, Can you cool. see me? Huh? Yeah, you're you're coming in and out, my man. But Grant, there's a lot of people. My that, internet's going out, Lee. If it goes out, that's okay, brother. I appreciate you being here. Uh, Grant, uh, name me a rat. All right, didn't... thank you, Lee. I'll stay on. Uh, name me a rat who didn't lie to save their own ass, but I agree they all play up their roles. Yes, Grant, but also there's a lot of people that are rats that you don't know are rats. Are Maybe you won't admit a rats. Let's remember that, Grant. Hey, Ramundi, how you doing, my man? I haven't seen you here. News will drop. Lee, uh, you have to become a hostile witness. Okay. Jack Jones still asking questions. Jack, change Jack your questions. Jones. Lee just needs to be around a gangster. You know what? I'm my own gangster. I don't need to be around nobody, dude. That's the reality of it. You're here right now watching my show in my chat room. So you want to be around me, Mickey. Think about that. There's quite a few Italians in here. Then there's guys like uh, Jack Jones and stuff uh dender but but uh antonino look at who's in here the biggest italian ever anthony luciano romundi I'm an fan. yeah <laughs> okay talking about rats why did lee send Barolo tape to casparosa <laughs> jeff tilly rat move right there but see you don't know jeff tilly anything you're assuming Keep asking your questions, people. I have no problem. Oh, the truth, an FBS fan. Uh, Jesse, bro is definitely a gangster, without a doubt. People don't want to hear that, Jesse. Uh, Jack jo Jones, Lee said he sent them to Tanya, who lived out of country. Exactly, Jane Perry. I did, but there was a reason behind that, Jane Perry. 
Well, Lee, if Osaro beat the charges regarding the heist, then there was evidence was not fair. JC, you're right. He did beat the charges. Uh, and there's a lot of people that say he wasn't involved. There's a lot of people that say he wasn't, that he was involved. So the only person that really knows the answer to that is Vinny Osaro himself. You know? Lee, I'm going to go to the store and get rolling today, but I want to say from my heart, thank you for having me on your show, Lee. No problem, brother. You're welcome anytime. Okay. And if I'm on right, tomorrow, bro. I'm on tomorrow. Take care, my man. Okay, guys, he was breaking up there. Let me read some of these. And don't worry, I'm not sensitive. You can put negative stuff up here. Here comes some teeth for Carlos. Hey, uh, Beantown, they'll say that about me too. <laughs> Let Sling Blade talk. I don't know where Sling Blade is. I don't know who he is. That's pretty disgusting, man. Tony's the only guy that can piss in a bottle and take a shit and do a show and not care. That's Tony. But you know what? There's FBS fans here today, and that's a good thing. Because, one, they're being respectful. They're asking questions. And they're welcome, as long as they're being respectful. If they keep asking the same thing over and over, I just ignore them. Let's make it clear, Mickey Griggs scammed disability for years. Jack Jones, how do you know that? You'd like to talk about me. You'd like to talk about Mickey Griggs. But what evidence do you have? See, the things about people being on YouTube, they love to present things without evidence. FBS can hold audience attention for longer periods of time. Yeah, but his numbers are have gone down quite a bit, Mickey. Uh, a matter of fact, check my numbers for this show at the end of the night and check his numbers for his show tonight. And he's going to have an interview. So that's how you tell. You know, and I'll put my watch time up against anybody's, Mickey. I can guarantee you my watch time is better than his. That I can guarantee you. And this is true. What a hypocrite. All FBS does is BS and drama. That's all he does. He'll literally talk about people from the beginning of the show to the end of the show. That's it. That's all he has. Can he hold an audience by talking about something that people want to hear? Like, I just talked to you guys about Vinny Asaro. I spent 20 minutes on Vinny Asaro. Let him spend 20 minutes on a gangster, but he won't. He'll spend 20 minutes on me. Lee, you're being invaded by leftists. Oh, let him come in. Uh, Butchie, as long as they're respectful, they can be here all they want. And if they're not respectful, it's easy for me to block them forever. You know, we're not going to be like the other shows and block people out because of their political beliefs or because of the way they think. We've had well over 200. We're at 184 right now, middle of the afternoon. I'll be on for about seven more minutes. And that's today. I mean, just today alone on a Tuesday, we've been, we've averaged 200 people. I mean, I can't ask for better than that. And if FBS people are going to come in here and, be respectful and keep that number up. They're more than welcome. Listen, here's my here's my opinion about interviewing Eiler. I think it was a good interview, but I don't think I I mean it was a good guy to interview, but I think it was done in it first of all he should have been advertised for at least a week. If you're going to bring somebody on like that, you got to advertise them. You can't hide them until the last minute. You know, let us know that 
he's going to be on. He seemed like a good kid. Uh, he's not even a kid. He's in his 30s now. Has his shit together, it seems like. Okay? So he called himself pajama pants. So, But the fact of the matter is, he doesn't seem like a bad kid or man or whatever he is. Only wish him the best in life. I have no issues with him. I have issues with the guy that was interviewing him. Does anybody know this dude's name? I'm curious. I don't know what dude you're talking about. Sean was a good boy. He has my respect. Salute. Okay. Okay, we're trying. We're at the. Uh, damn, I'm 50 minutes behind. Let me pull up here, guys. I'm sorry, man. For your, I got to pull ahead here. Let me get to at least 1.30. Now that's a chat room, people. When I'm when I'm like, I've been here reading all these quotes, and I'm an hour behind. That's a chat room. That's why this is the best chat room going. Okay, what's that got to do with the price of tea in China? I don't know what you're talking about there, Joey Electric. Uh, Uncle Bad touched uh, the consultant. He loves his horses. You know, I wonder whatever happened to Uncle Bad Touch. We don't see much of him anymore. He came in with a boom and went out with a whimper. Bootlip, Barry, say 6666 again without spitting out those teeth. Okay, how's this? 6666. Is that good enough, Bootlip? People, this is my sister right here. I don't like to say that, but she can handle herself if any of the trolls uh, jump in. 6666 Ranch, great. They are letting you film the ranch. Yes, yeah, so when my sister was here, I took her over to the ranch. Right, Joan? I appreciate you showing up on the show. Uh, my sister is very, very loyal to me. Uh, we grew up together. We're right in the same age range. We did everything together. Um, and... Uh, we spent, we lived together in Brooklyn. Uh, when I was married to my first wife, we lived with my sister Joan. And then I moved over to another part of Brooklyn. And my sister Joan stayed in Astoria, Queens. Uh, we are what you call real New Yorkers, as real as you can get. My sister Joan, she actually worked at a law firm in Manhattan. And uh, she fell in love with a married window washer. Remember that, Joan? I'm not going to tell that story. But yes, we kept telling her that he was married. But did she want to listen? Nope. She didn't listen. Sorry, sis. I had to tell that story. Love you. Kevin Bacon. Camp, uh, Nakin. Kevin Nakin. Okay, I'm sorry. Kevin Bacon. Lee, Tony Pizza says he's coming to Texas. Tony Pizza's a coward. Tony Pizza will not go nowhere. Tony Pizza threatens people. He, Do you guys remember when he was going to see uh, FBS? And then he pretended that he was like in that town. He was never there. Tony Pizza's probably never been in a fight in his life. You know, he's more than welcome to come here anytime. He has my phone number. He can call me, and I will give him my exact address, and he's more than welcome. To, as a matter of fact, if he came here, I would film it. I would love for him to come here. But what did he say? He said that he, I, yeah, he would come here, and I would throw him in my room and tie him up and throw him on a mattress. Tony can say some funny shit sometimes. Okay, there's uh, what's this thing? Uh, muscle shops at Walmart. <laughs> um, how many people here shop at Walmart? You know, I used to love Walmart. I don't go to Walmart no more. I haven't been to Walmart in years because of uh, when they got really political. If you know what I mean, 
I stopped shopping at Walmart. I used to love Walmart. That's what sucks about them getting so political. And once they got political like that, and there was no way I was going to shop there anymore. Okay, let's see. We're getting on that two-hour mark. I'm about getting close here. We're at 182. Unbelievable. I can't wait to see what the numbers are on the regular. I respect our Republican enemies, especially the real ones, but the genre is for everyone, plenty of Americans and loyalists, and Republicans, communities also. You're absolutely right. We should respect each other. We stop respecting people when they don't respect us. That's what it comes down to. Uh there's people on the left that I have friends that they're what you what I call logical liberals. A logical liberal is someone that's truly liberal. They're not socialists. They're just logical thinkers. I respect those people, but the problem is that that party has been taken over by socialists and uh, the logical liberals are disappearing. Lee, Tony knew Sammy Gavano. Well, according to Sammy Gavano, he felt sorry for him. Uh, uh, he friended him on um, Facebook, sent him money to help him out, and he knew they both came from the same neighborhood. Well, Tony never lived. Tony was from Long Island. Somehow Tony says he's from that neighborhood, but that never made sense because he's from Long Island, and he's an Irishman. But the fact of the matter is, uh, yeah, Sammy did know him, trying to be nice to him. And then when he betrayed Sammy, Sammy dumped him. And he did betray him. A matter of, do you remember the horrible things that he said about Sammy's daughter and the words that he used, the N-word, when he was describing Sammy's daughter? So should we forget that? Because Sammy sure didn't. Uh, Darren, uh, you won't get no Spumoni as good as LMB anywhere. Yes, uh, if you go to my website, you'll see that we did a review on LMB, and we talked about the Spumoni ice cream. We talked about the Sicilian pizza. And if you live in Brooklyn, even if you live in Queens or Manhattan, you got to go check this restaurant out. If you want real Sicilian pizza, they don't have a ton of cheese on it. They make it the right way. They make pizza the way they make it in Italy. With sauce, light cheese, and uh, and um, they cook it with olive oil. Lee, for such a great debater, he gets lost. When people have to tell you that they're a great debater, they're usually not. When people have to brag how smart they are, they're not usually that smart. Either you're smart or you're not. Lefty and Gunsmoke were smoking pot on uh, his show until he got enough complaints, I guess. I'm an atheist, but for the love of God, hit the like button. <laughs> uh, yeah, and you know, uh, I got to give Lefty credit because Lefty was kind of defending me on his show the other day, believe it or not. Lefty came in here and we treated him good. Lefty came in here and acted good, even though he disagrees with me. So you got to respect him. You know, that's what it comes down to. And he was actually uh, sticking up for me in his show. So i like to say thank you for Lefty for being, uh, you won't hear me attacking Lefty no more for the simple fact he shows that he's trying to be fair-minded. So I'll just leave it at that. Always, bro, it's different over there. My nearest, dearest are Republicans, and they are orange bastard abuse, and I give them feline bastard abuse, and guns won't come back uh, out over a mob, too. Okay. Go. It's on 89th and 3rd, Bay Ridge. Great place. Exactly. You better love my show. You got to get mom to watch the show. She doesn't want to watch her own son. My mother is still alive, and she's 85 years old. That woman should have been dead years ago. So it's a miracle that she's alive.
Hey Lee, if I had a show, it would have tons of numbers because you know, if you remembered, we owned a junkyard in Canarsie, Brooklyn on Foster Avenue. My family's last name, I am 58, 100% Italian. <laughs> that was a joke, people. Uh, Gunner said his, his, further is, his father is Spanish, 100%. You know, I think I'm going to invite Gunner on here for another interview. What do you guys think about me having Gunner on maybe sometime this week or I like Gunner because Gunner sees through uh, that clown's BS. A lot of people on YouTube mentioned the name. Oh, okay, I don't know where you're going with that. Darren C4. Yeah, that's where I grew up. I moved to Graves, Gravesend and then to an apartment back in Bay Ridge, then moved to Florida. You know, that's funny, Darren. I, did, I lived in... Uh, when I was married uh, with my first wife, we lived in Bay Ridge, and then we moved down to Miami. And uh, we lived in Bay Ridge, I think it was uh, 85, we were in Bay Ridge. That was another time I lived in. In 85, we were in Bay Ridge, then we went to Miami. We lived in Miami two years, we came back to New York and broke up. God, he's hiring informants like Chris Kasparos and MTR. I don't think he hires them. You know, you got to remember, I'm not going to say nothing about Chris, but as for MTR, sometimes people just want to be around the name. They just want to be able to say they're around Gotti's. And it goes to their head. And there's no doubt Angel Gotti's a lot tougher than MTR. Lee, I just saw a gangland news article about Kasparosa giving evidence to the cops. Uh, I, nothing surprises me, people. There's a lot of shit going on behind the scenes. A lot of vicious stuff. Well, we don't know what's going on behind the scenes, but there's a lot of vicious stuff. And, uh, as, you know, come on. I, I have people threaten me. With, you know, they come on here and they pretend they're tough guys. And then they say... If you contact me again or say something negative to me, I'm going to call a lawyer. I mean, that's what type of people you're dealing with. Yeah, no, they don't get along. That we do know. And if they do get along, they pretend they're getting along, but they hate each other. I read about I used to hang out with Gene all the time back in the day until he turned on me. He got very jealous of my relationship with Florida, and he got put on the record with Florida back in 88. Okay. I'm only going to do a couple more people. It's, I've been on two hours and eight minutes. Lee, are you going to debate why? That, that would be, like, really unfair. He snaps easy. He wouldn't last. Uh, I wouldn't waste my time. I don't even want to be around the guy. I don't even want to look at him. I don't want to talk to him. I want nothing to do with him whatsoever. Okay, I tried and my posts were deleted from we pushed back weeks ago. So JTV has known. Okay, I didn't. I don't know what you're talking about there, my man, but anybody can beat Tony Cheesecake in a debate. All he does is curse and spit at the camera. That's it. He gets angry. Boot lip. Uh, FBS looks like a thumb with glasses. Boot lips, dollar 99. Thank you very much, boot, boot lips. It's appreciated. Joy Electric, yes, you know damn well I've been involved in many lawsuits. Uh, what people say and what the facts are are two different things. And uh, sometimes people give other people way too much credit. Uh, 
Okay, yes, FBS does rip up our callers and chat people for being in recovery. He goes after somebody in particular. I think Johnny Mac overusing methadone. I think that's ridiculous if you claim exactly. Exactly. You can't claim to be all about trying to help people. How many times have you heard this guy go after me and call me a pill popper? One, it's not true, but if it was true, and if you are all about the program and helping people, why would you go after people for and call them pill poppers? Why would you go after Johnny Mac and for using methadone? I mean, that's part of a treatment. I can go after Johnny F. Mac for using methadone because I can't stand the guy. Look at that guy. Look at what he's done. He has literally attacked people, then becomes friends with them continuously. Yeah. Any of these guys, you know, it's like I talked about with Tony. Tony came after me a couple times. Both times we forgot about it. And then the next thing I know, I would turn on his show and he'd be talking about me. And I'd call him up and say, Tony, why are you talking about me? And he would say, it's just part of the show, Lee. And then he would continue doing it. Then it got to the point that it wasn't worth listening to him anymore. So since that time, I have not talked to him in months. That's it. You know, I have no interest in ever dealing with him in any way again. And if you guys ever see me dealing with Tony, do me a favor. Uh, unsub for me because I don't deserve your sub. Don Vito. I watch all these shows, Miss. This is just entertainment for me, but I have to be honestly, I would trust you as far as I can throw you. But Don Vito, I feel the same way about you. But you know, you come on my show with negative comments all the time. But you know what? I still put your comments up. Now, why don't you go on other shows and try to be negative? You would be blocked. I'm just trying to catch up on these guys. There's so many messages today. I'm actually looking forward to seeing exactly how many messages we'll put out here today. Okay, Pauly, Canarsie guy, Lee, you never asked or wanted to. You just assume because my name on here, not cool, Lee. What did I say? I never said nothing negative about you, Pauly, Canarsie guy. Okay, we're up to 151 here. I'm going to try to jump a little bit ahead, get toward the end here, read the last few comments. Okay, we're up to 203. Let's try to get up to, okay, 211, 230. Okay, we're at right here. We are at 211. Johnny is one who causes all the drama. Beantown, FBS looks like an m, &M that never went to the candy coating machine. Okay. okay, ghosts aren't real. Bubbles, that's some picture you got there, Bubbles. Uh, music dreams love your show, Lee. As others have said, you can't be Angel Gotti's friend and also tell the truth about her father. MTR has brown nose to Gotti's for years. Boy, music dreams. What you said, I could not have said better. I mean, that that's that's it. That's all that you need to know right there. People, please hit the like button if you haven't hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe to the show. I appreciate it. Uh, we're doing really good. Uh, we're almost at 14, uh, 1400. We're almost at 3,400 now and uh, should be there within a week. And then we'll shoot for 3,500. Um, Paul Canarsie guy, Lee has Alzheimer's. <laughs> I, I don't even know what you're saying. I forgot. Okay. Lucky Luciano, Lee, who would win the champion? A league this season. Oh, well, listen, I'm a baseball fan. I'll be going for the Yankees. I am an avid Yankee fan. I love the Yankees. But I don't think they're going to win it because their pitching is very suspect. Why they don't do something with their pitching is beyond me. 
Uh, baseball is kind of hard to predict, but I would say Houston probably will be there again. The favorites and the Dodgers or San Francisco has a great young pitching staff. They, they put together a nice team. Uh, soccer. Don't ask me about soccer. Okay. We're talking about baseball. Okay. Sister, my sis really loved your show today. Love your comebacks. Joan, you know that. You, My sister knows what type of person I am. She knows my good sides and my bad sides. And so basically she knows I'm just good. Rolling on the floor, Lee, you've been done there to laugh out loud. Well, Don Vito, I appreciate you coming on the show, no matter what you have to say. You're welcome to any time. I respect you, even though I disagree with you. But sometimes I respect people I disagree with. Do, do, he stands for nothing, even the guy Eugene's. Tony Monitor has pointed out how Johnny only came back because he wasn't getting enough love and benefits from us, but nobody trusts him. Nobody trusts that guy. I mean, that guy's like the big joke. He's an absolute joke. He's not worth our time. If anybody thinks that his subs went up to that overnight, normally, I would say look at his numbers. His numbers do not match his subs. There's no doubt. There's nothing legit about that guy. He's a coward. And the fact of the matter, not only is he a coward, he's a huge coward. He's a joke. He's, a, he's not even worth, I feel guilty talking about him. He doesn't even deserve to be talked about. He is easily the most hated guy on these channels, without a doubt. Nobody likes him, not even the people in his chat room. He thinks they like him, but they don't. And if people argue with him in the chat room, he gets mad and starts fighting with them. <laughs> he's just such a clown. FTR says, Joey Merlano, Merlino told him to write a federal judge and cry about A-Light wanting to beat up Junior. I wonder who really put him up to that. Do you guys really think Joey Merlino spoke to him? Come on, people. Do you really think that? Anybody that believes that story, Joey Merlino, he would speak to him. For what reason? What reason would he speak to him? Now, if you said Joey Merlino was going to speak to Capesci, Capisci, who is actually a top-notch uh, mob reporter, yeah, I can understand that. But there would be no reason to speak to that clown. Okay. Paul Canarsi, I'm going to put... Paulie Canarsi, I'm going to put my email right down there right now. Please feel free to write me whatever you want. People, anybody else wants to write me, my email is coming up right now. It's fine with me. Okay, guys. Let's see. Uh, there's my email. Everybody take care. I appreciate you being here. We had great numbers today for Tuesday. I might do a live tomorrow. I'm not sure, but probably will. I'm trying to do more lives on a regular basis. Everybody take care. Bless you. I love my country very much. Vote in November because we can't change nothing without voting. It doesn't matter who you vote for as long as you vote. Vote in 24. Let's get these scumbags that are in office destroying this company, that this country the hell out. Let's retire Nancy Pelosi, the most evil woman on the face of the earth. But you're only going to do that if you get out and vote and change the whole entire system uh, this year. Everybody take care. Thank you so much for everything. Bye.